Good morning, it's Rev Bill and the sun is shining and it's good to be alive and it's good to do some things that are consistent and regular. So join in with me with this liturgy. The Lord be with you and also with you. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and always. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In silence we confess our faults to God and accept our weaknesses. Loving God, you know all the secrets of our hearts and yet still love us. Forgive us for our careless thoughts and for our thoughtless deeds. Breathe your life once more into our lives, that we may find peace within ourselves and create peace around us, to the glory of your name. May God forgive us, Christ renew us, and the Spirit fill us all with hope and love. Amen. So we say together the canticle on living well. Love must be genuine, hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Take delight in honouring one another. Let hope keep you joyful, be patient in times of trouble. Persist in prayer. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud or conceited. Do not repay anyone evil with evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of all people. As far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Had a good week? No. What did you do? Nothing. Had anything nice to eat this week? Not really. What are you going to do tonight? Nothing. I've got to go. Have you? Why? Because I have to go and do nothing. Does it sound familiar? But hang on. They say that statistics, that statistics say that people, and that's teenagers, you just about count as people these days, people wake up with their mobile phone under their pillow and it's the first thing they think about in the morning. They're busy from the moment they wake up on emails, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube or podcasts. Over 80% of people look at their mobile phone within 15 minutes of waking up. And probably most teenagers would sacrifice breakfast and a shower to spend more time on their iPhone. Odd. Because most people are not waiting to get an important email from Greta or from Boris. And they probably haven't shares on the stock market and wanted to know the latest price. That reminds me of my English teacher at school, a secondary comprehensive school. I was in the S class, which was for either stupid or special. I never figured that out. Anyway, I got the best, apparently, English teacher in the school, Mrs. Porter, who was a crazy old lady of about 40 years old. 
She was so odd. She would make you, if you were naughty, run around the football pitch while we all looked out the window and watched you. And if you were really, really naughty, she'd stop your homework. I know. It's crazy. She was so odd. She made us use a quill pen with ink to dip in. And we had to learn to write with it. And we had to write good English before she'd allow us to use a biro. That was a real treat. A biro. Wow. My, I say she was crazy. She's the only really teacher I, I have kept in touch with years later. And I now realise she was right. Anyway, I wanted to mention about the second best English teacher because I wanted him to teach me because he taught the pupils the stock market. Nothing to do with English, but it seemed really cool at the time. If I'd only been in his class, I'd be rich right now and I wouldn't be talking to you. Oh, I don't know. Perhaps, perhaps I am rich. Anyway, back to the point today. Teenagers do not want to miss out. The world will end if you're not up to date with the latest goss of the day. Before getting out of bed, you've heard how X has broken up with Y, how B is not speaking to C, why D doesn't like teacher P, and F wants you to give him the answer to the homework queue, and how Newcastle got beat yet again last night. It reminds me when I used to travel on a university bus from campus to campus. It was a, a 10 minute journey and the bus would be full of students and I would sit at the back on this 10 minute journey and I'd watch the students. And every 30 seconds they'd go, I didn't know what they were waiting for. It wasn't as if they were going to get the news that Ronaldo or Messi had moved on a free transfer to Newcastle United. We get addicted to looking for likes and dislikes, to dot, 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 that tells you that someone's writing to you, to the word seen feature that means that they've seen your comment, to the autoplay that keeps YouTube rolling on and on, and on and on. Japan has invented a new term. It's called hikikomari, hikikomari, which stands for someone who never leaves their bedroom. I guess lockdown doesn't help this, does it? Mind, when I was a teenager, the bedroom was so cold, you'd freeze to death if you were there for more than 30 minutes. OK, enough waffle. Here's my point, folks. One, social media is designed to hijack your attention. There's a dopamine trigger mechanism in social media. It's as addictive as smoking or alcohol or drugs. We just need to acknowledge that as a fact. They design it that way. Two, it's normal to feel that you're helpless to resist. So be kind to yourself. We all struggle. But three, too much is just not healthy for you. You think you're opening up the world, but actually your world is just getting narrower and narrower and narrower. Four. You now have to use Zoom and Teams, which only adds to more focus. I recognise that. It's not ideal. So let's find a way to complement it. Not online. Go for walks. Play chess. Do jigsaws. Keep fit. Read books. Write a book. A life of a boring teenager. 
I'd read it. Dig the garden. Plant some seeds in the greenhouse. Ask the elderly person on your road if you can help them in any way. Practice painting. Learn some origami. Buy a musical instrument. Just do something that's away from this thing. A friend of mine once said, if you watch the sun rise and fall every day for three weeks, you cannot be depressed. Awe and wonder is actually not in here. It's out here. Well, to finish, as a teenager, I used to play football. And one day I broke someone's leg. It was a mean, hard-hitting, 50-50 tackle. I didn't give in. His leg snapped. I didn't think much about it. And he didn't seem to begrudge me. But a little while later, someone tripped me up. And I fell and I broke my right wrist. It took over three months for it to heal because they messed up the plaster. Three months. And a teacher said to me in school, Merrington, why don't you learn to write with your left hand instead of sitting in class doing nothing? I didn't listen. I still can't write with my left hand. If I'd learned, I'd be a lot better at the guitar using my left hand. And I regret that. Three months in plaster wasted. Like three months of a lockdown. I just wonder if you might be brighter than me. I have a funny feeling that you are. I hope so. Well, it's 10.30. I need to go and listen to Popmaster on Radio 2. So I'll see you next week. Bye. So let's be thankful. As you can see, the sun is shining. The garden's thawing. So let's give thanks for the simple things of life as we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May God be with us in our thoughts, that we might be thankful people. May God be with us in our words, that we might be gracious people. And may God be with us in our deeds, that we might seek to serve one another. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>